Welcome to this instructional video for the Dave Smith Instruments Pro 2 Editor from SoundTower. In this video, we'll check out sound generators. SoundTower has created a collection of tools for the Pro 2 that makes creating new sounds fun and surprising. Under Sound Generator in the menu are three different sound development tools, Program Genetics, Morpher, and Patchmaker. We'll look at Program Genetics first. As the name might imply, the analogy of family will be used. Let's look at the elements on the page. At the very top of the page, you will notice a set of buttons labeled Mix, Morph, Mutate, and Random. More on these in a moment. Below that and on the left, we have two sets of bank selectors with a mommy and daddy list of patches. As with the librarian, we can select any bank of patches for either the mommy or daddy list. So the analogy is this. We pick the mommy patch. This is the starting point. We then select a daddy patch. We then click on one of the four blending buttons at the top. Mix, Morph, Mutate, and Random have different algorithms for combining parameters. This will generate a list of 99 genetically related patches in the kids column. Here's what happens when you hit the four blending mode buttons. Mix. As the name suggests, mixes up the parameters, some from mom and some from dad. This is a random parameter generator. This can be seen by selecting two patches and clicking mix a number of times. Each time mix is clicked, the names of the kids change, as does the sound. Clearly, with any of the blending modes, because of the random factor of the new patch generation, many sounds may be unusable for many genres of music, but perhaps perfect for some sound design and other uses. Try picking two patches, make some kids, well, you know. Push the button and have a listen. I'll try a few here and see what happens. But before I do that, I'll introduce you to the principle of top offspring. This is a column where you can take the generated patches that you like and separate them from the rest for further filing or processing. Okay, here we go. Okay, I've picked two patches here. I've picked Pro Soloist on the mummy side and Washi Strings on the daddy side. Let's see if we have anything here that's uh, fun and useful. Uh, we'll try this one here. Interesting. I think that's worth saving. We'll send that over to Top Offspring. Very cool. Let's save that one. Let's go down a ways and see what we got. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, hunt and peck to find something that works, but uh, some pretty cool sounds. You know, like, like that one. Let's get something down a little further. Nice evolving filter on that. Let's save that one out too. Some good ones maybe, some not so good. A few worth saving I would think. Just a small point though, if you want to be able to hear your sounds, be sure auto audition is checked. And don't forget, we're just sending data to the buffer so nothing will be saved to the Pro 2 while we are auditioning sounds. This area in the center allows us to save general or specific parameters of the mommy patch that we don't want changed. As an example, if I like the sound of the oscillators, I could click all of these buttons and the oscillators of the mommy patch will stay the same. Because the filter is going to be mixed, the sound may still change very dramatically. However, the value of the oscillator parameters will not be adjusted. As you can see by the list on the far right hand side, if we just click oscillator 1, there are a number of parameters that make up oscillator 1. 
We can, if we wish, work right down to the smallest detail of what parameters on the Pro 2 will be modified when we generate new patches. Let's see how that affects our results. Okay, we'll start with the same uh, two sounds. We'll use Pro Soloist and Washi Strings. We'll reload those. I'm going to keep the same top offspring that we already generated and, and saved out. Uh, in this case, I'm going to leave the oscillators, the four oscillators uh, that were used in the Pro Soloist, and we'll, those will not be adjusted. Let's mix a new set of kids. And let's see what we get this time. It's nice. Also nice. Let's go down a ways. Not so much. As you can tell by the sound, they're, the sounds are very related because the oscillators have stayed the same, but there's still some pretty vast differences in the filters. As point. Very interesting. Nope. Again, some interesting sounds and some not so usable. So let's move on to Morph. Morph works in the same way, but creates patches using a different algorithm. Each parameter just moves in a predetermined manner from one patch to the next. You will notice that successive clicks on the Morph button do not change the names or the sounds of the kids. Let's see if we can find anything fun this time. Okay, we're going to start with the two different patches this time. We'll start with the uh, mommy patch will be this Paravox, and the daddy patch will be this uh, Caram Caramboloid. And we'll start and see what we get there. So there's the pure Paravox voice. Like that one. Interesting. That's nice. effect. Excellent. Again, completely unpredictable and some very interesting results. Let's move on to Mutate. Mutate, again, same thing, but again, different results. There's a secret sauce thing that goes on with this one that no one's really talking about. Again, random with each click. Let's have a listen. Okay, we'll just start with the same two patches as the, as the previous section and see what we get. Let's hit mutate a couple times. Go up to the top of the list and let's see what we get. Nothing there. Nice. It's interesting. Might be a nice starting place. Spacey effect. Again, just a nice effect. We'll save that one as well. Okay, very good. 
And finally, random. Same process, but completely different method of blending. These sounds tend to be a little less musical, but you just never know. Let's see what we can find in a couple of rounds. I suggested it can be a little difficult sometimes to find patches that uh, will actually show up and, and do something for you. Uh, I found a couple here, Pro Want. I uh, just actually put that on both sides and just did the random deal. This one's kind of interesting. And I think I'll save that over to Top Offspring so we can find something else that works. Kind of a complex noise thing. We'll save that. Again, another sound effect. It might be an interesting effect for something. Because of the random nature of this generator, you never know what's going to happen. And uh, sometimes you have to spend a little while to find patches that are useful or that will even make any sound at all sometimes because of how filters or whatnot are set up but uh, certainly fun to play with, and you never know when you're going to find just that perfect sound. Before we go any further, let's take a look at what we can do with these top offspring that we have collected from using the, the various algorithms of uh, random patches. If we go back to Banks and then out to Librarian, we have the choice under the Librarian tab to select Add from Top Offspring. And that brings over all the top offspring that we've collected that we can... Uh, again, we could, uh, as we showed in the librarian uh, video, we could select all these and then drive them back into the into the Pro 2 if we wanted to use them right away, or we could save them out. And I'd already saved one kids. Let's uh, do a kids 2 here. And so now we have a couple uh, sets of, of kid patches that we have uh, saved out that we could call up another time and do further work on them if we when we have the uh, time to do that. So there's uh, nothing, none of your work is lost when you uh, save those, uh, those off top offspring patches. They're, they're there, you can save them out and work on them at a later point. There's another way you can save patches you discover and want to keep. Click Command A on a Mac or Control A on a PC and your selection will be saved to a snapshot file right here. And after you save them out, you can click File, Save programs, and you can save these snapshots to you can save them out. And again, you can recall them uh, for a later recall to do some additional work on them. Okay, on to Morpher. This sound generator is very fun. Again, two columns to select two patches, a slider at the top to move from one generated patch to the other or use the arrows at the ends of the slider path. If you hit a sound you like, you can add it to the lib or write it to the Pro 2. Clicking lib adds the new patch to the right side of the librarian for further library task, or clicking right presents you with this dialog so you can immediately save the patch to a location in the Pro 2, as well as select the category. There's also an XY pad that you can use to identify two parameters and tweak them. The default is cutoff and resonance. Let's hop right into this generator and see what we can come up with. Let's pick, uh, let's pick square base again. And what is, don't know what get a tempest is, but let's see what we can come up with. And we'll slide this back here. Try something else. Let's try pull this and this. Let's save that one. We'll add that to the lib. Let's go here and here. Save that to the lib. I 
That's nice. It's very nice. I think let's do one more round. The last sound generator was padded. Nice effect. Add that to the lib. Another neat effect. Kind of a melodic sound effect. Let's add that to the lib. Now that we've added those, added those to the, the, uh, li the librarian, we can come out here, librarian, and there they are. Again, save them out, dump them back into the Pro 2, whatever your, whatever your choice is. The last sound generator is Patchmaker. Don't be fooled by the simple interface. This can also be a very powerful tool. Here, you simply select a starting patch and all the categories set to the values of that patch. From here, you can select a set of parameters from any available patch to generate new and unique sounds. At the top are buttons to copy a patch you have created over to the library or to write it immediately to the Pro 2. Once again, there's a bit of luck that goes on, so let's see what we can come up with. Okay, let's see what we get here. Let's change the oscillators to this. Is there any feedback on here? Nope. Filter. Let's grab the filter from, let's say, let it sizzle. Not a big difference. Let's see what do we get if we do this. Yeah, the filter's different there. Let's uh, change out the oscillators again. Let's try this. Try another filter. Let's go. Sure. Again, it's just all trial and error to find the right combination of patches and the right section to adjust, and, and it's just another way to create some some unique sounds. I hope this has given you even a glimpse into this exciting tool to reach inside and generate unique and exciting programs with your Pro 2 editor from Sound Tower. It's so easy.